Welcome to today's webinar, Key Considerations in Home Safety and Modifications, hosted by SAGE. Much of today's information has been shared by organizations specializing in home modification, including Rebuilding Together's Safe at Home program. To learn more, go to www.rebuildingtogether.org. SAGE, or Services and Advocacy for LGBT Elders is the country's largest and oldest organization dedicated to improving the lives of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender older adults. Our mission is to lead in addressing issues related to lesbian, gay, and bisexual and transgendered aging. SAGE is headquartered in New York City and has affiliates, 29 affiliates in 21 states across the country. In 2015, SAGE's National LGBT Elder Housing Initiative asks communities to imagine a new reality. The initiative is a multi-year project with five key actions designed to ensure millions of LGBT older adults can access welcoming and LGBT housing in all its forms. The key areas of the initiative include building housing, this includes capacity building initiatives to increase resources around replication of multifamily development for LGBT friendly senior housing, as well as training providers on LGBT cultural competency. Also included is our SAGE's policy work around fair housing and, and, and non-discrimination against LGBT older adults in housing. This includes the equal access rule passed by HUD in 2014. Last, SAGE will be working to increase consumer education and expanding services around areas of aging in place with care coordination to ensure that SAGE's constituents have resources at their disposal to make the best choice for their housing needs as they age. Now we'll look at today's objectives for the webinar. To better understand the demographics facing local communities, to understand the additional implications of LGBT aging older adults, understanding the different types of home modification available to individuals wanting to age in place, and a basic overview of safety modifications individuals can make to their home to more safely um, remain at home. Currently, it's estimated that there are almost 3,000 LGBT older adults over the age of 50 in the United States. To provide context, this is roughly the size of the city of Chicago. By the year 2040, this number should reach, is estimated to reach 7 million LGBT older adults in the United States. Today, one-third of households 50 and over pay more than one-third of their monthly income for rent or mortgage. By 2024, it is estimated that an estimated 4.7 million low-income households 50 and older will have an annual income less than $30,000 a year. Cost burden households run the risk of doing without other needed services such as medication, transportation, and food. In 2014, the Equal Rights Center released a report that found that 48% of older same-sex couples applying for senior housing were subjected to some form of housing discrimination. Mainstream affordable housing and assisted living nursing home providers have often not received training for staff around LGBT cultural comp competence, and this becomes a greater issue as our demographics increase over the coming years. The LGBT community often struggles with affordability in older age due to a history of discrimination and economic marginalization. The solution, as I stated earlier in the summary slide, is to develop a continuum of housing resources for LGBT older adults. This includes providing culturally competent services, welcoming communities where their peers and allies um, provide a welcoming environment and affordability is taken into direct consideration. Aging in place best practices provide alternatives for communities unable to galvanize political will for multifamily development or in locations that may be more rural in nature. Cultural competency training for staff of all affordable housing, assisted living and nursing homes um, provides an added layer for mainstream housing providers 
to meet the needs of LGBT clients. Falls are the leading cause of death in the elderly, with a large number occurring in the home setting. Oftentimes, this is due to individuals living in non-conducive housing settings. Minor home modifications or simple interventions like removing rugs or adding grab bars could avoid falls and increase the safety of an individual's home. Here we see that recent studies have shown that every 17 seconds an older adult is treated in the ER for a fall and that one in three adults 65 and older fall each year. Approx approximately 20 to 55 percent of unintentional falls occur inside the home with 75 percent of those occurring during the performance of routine daily tasks. Falls are the leading cause of death in the elderly. Causes of falls tend to fall into one of three categories due to health and age related changes or due to hazardous situations often within the home environment. Examples of precipitating events that lead to potential falls includes changes in physical activity which may lead to problems with balance or reflexes or changes in eyesight. The rate of reported visual impairment often increases with age. By the age of 65, 17% of those surveyed had reduced vision and those over 75, there were 26% of those with reduced or increased vision impairment. On SAGE's website, you will find downloadable mock-ups of each room in the house. These were developed by HUD around redevelopment and home modification. You can download these mock-ups to do your own home assessment, along with checklists that are available on SAGE's website as well, developed by AARP and, and other partners like Rebuilding Together. A home audit will consist of the following steps. Assessing your home environment and gather, gathering pertinent data. Identifying potential problem areas that could cause issues for you as you age. And additional tools highlighted here to engage in possible safety improvements in your home. In addition, you can reach out to your local area agency on aging to identify additional local resources that may not be highlighted here. So let's begin. We will start at the entrance of your home. Number signs identifying your home's address or unit number, if too small or lacking color contrast, can be hard for older adults to read, especially at night. Other items to consider are changing doorknobs out for lever door handles, making them easier to use as we age and if we are carrying packages or other items. For those using walkers or wheelchairs, the standard 28-inch doorway can often be mobility prohibitive. Ideally, having a doorway that is 32 to 36 inches wide increases the ability of those with limited uh, mobility to access the threshold. If widening doorways is cost prohibitive, consider offset door hinges, which can add two inches to the doorway and allow access for some wheelchairs and walkers. Ensure you have handrails for steps and avoid drop-offs without a railing on patio areas. We're now going to look at different parts of the home individually and call out specific considerations within each that can add to and help create safer living environments. It is recommended that organizations work directly with a certified aging in place specialist, providing that there is one in your area to make any of these modifications. Your local area agency on aging should be available to provide you information around organizations that have staff with these types of certifications. A large number of reported falls happen in the bathroom area. Luckily, there are some minor changes that can add a great deal of safety for residents. And included in these more relative cost-effective changes are changing out knob handles or sink or tub and shower knobs for lever handles, which can be easier to use for those with arthritis or hand limitations. Adding a flexible slide bar or handheld shower head um, and tub or shower seat, as well as grab bars, can increase the safety while showering for you and your family. Additionally, depending on physical needs you have around use of mobility devices, you could consider offset door hinges that provide a wider access to the bathroom by at least two inches and do not require widening of the entire doorway. Last, depending on your height and mobility limitations, a comfort height toilet or placing a small grab bar next to the toileting area can make it easier to get up and down. 
Here we see some of the statistics around falls in the bathroom area. Approximately 234,000 bathroom injuries are treated in the U.S. annually of those 15 and older. Approximately 80% of household falls take place in the bathroom area. About half of older adults who are discharged for fall-related hip fractures will experience another fall within six months. And falls are the leading cause of death due to injury among the elderly, and 87% of fractures in the elderly are due to falls. To combat this, some considerations to consider to keep bathrooms safer include using non-skid mats or textured stickers on slippery surfaces, adjusting toilet paper so that it is within easy reach, keeping bathroom cleaners stored safely, securing outside bath mat with non-slip double-sided rug tape, having your cell phone nearby or install a doorbell feature or handbell near the tower, tub or shower that can be used to call for help in case of emergency. Ensure that there's good lighting within the bathroom area and decrease clutter around the tub and shower area and eliminate the need for bending to reach items on the shower floor by adding organized storage areas within the shower. Tub seats can be a great added feature for older adults who are not looking to remodel a home. They reduce falls and provide comfort. The legs of the tub seat are adjustable and the textured plastic seat or back provide a non-slip grip. For households that may have a shower instead of a tub, shower seats can be an added feature that add elements of safety. It benefits, the benefits here include taking up less space due to the fact that the shower seat drops down from the wall and still provides a comfortable option for individuals that may have trouble standing for long periods of time. Shower heads on slide bars or that are handheld in nature can provide greater flexibility for individuals who may want to utilize a shower or tub seat for bathing. Grab bars can be an inexpensive and easy addition to a bathroom setting to provide additional support for older adults. Typically, grab bars cost between $25 and $30 and can be installed at various heights and settings within the bathing area. It is important to note here that proper blocking utilizing studs or specialty mounts should be utilized to ensure that the grab bar can hold the weight of someone using it for support. Comfort height toilets are raised higher off the ground and for some individuals make sitting for toileting purposes an easier exercise. Note, for those that are shorter, a standard height toilet may remain the best option. Now let's move into the kitchen. Some of the items that often present difficulty as we age can be costly to replace. However, increasing usability through using D-shaped handles uh, for cabinets instead of knobs, as well as levers instead of knobs on faucets, increase ease, especially for those with, with arthritis or hand mobility. Additional lower cost considerations would be to organize your ca cabinets to have items you use most regularly on easy to reach shelves, or if you are able to invest a little more money, slide out kitchen shelving can be an effective addition. These tend to range in price but start around $100. Other considerations is having your microwave or other regularly used items easy to reach. Again, storing frequently used items at a height between the shoulders and knees, using a step stool with handrails if necessary to reach higher cabinets, installing the lever handles on doors and faucets for ease, and installing D-shaped handle hardware on cabinet doors and drawers for ease of use. Here are examples of the D-shaped hardware for cabinets and drawers, as well as the lever handle for faucets. Here is an example of how to organize cabinets in a way that provide ease and comfort as someone ages. The pullout feature, as discussed earlier, start at around $100. They can often reduce counter clutter and provide opportunities to maximize use of counter space for needed appliances and microwave. Now we will look at some other items to keep in mind that can add ease and create a safer environment.
Be aware of how wide the hallways are in your home and recognize if you have increased limited mobility in the future. This could present an issue. Also, 90 degree turns in hallways can be difficult for those using wheelchairs. As stated previously, doorways ideally should be at least 32 inches wide, if not 36, to ensure the use of mobility devices such as walkers or wheelchairs. The largest barriers as we age in stairways, including a lack of proper lighting and lack of handrails on both sides of the stairway. Also included here is, a, is the monochromatic nature of floor covering on stairs. Handrails can also be difficult to grip for those with limited use of their, of their hands. Unprotected drop-offs at the, at the base of stairways should be avoided without handrails for stabilization. For those that do not want to incur the cost of widening doorways or cannot afford to do so, you can consider offset door hinges which create at least two additional inches in doorways and allow great space for wheelchairs and walkers. Installing these, you use the same holes and screws as your existing hinges, and it can be an easier and less expensive way to broaden doorways. Loose throw rugs or worn carpeting can create possible trip and fall hazards. Whenever possible, securing rugs with double-sided tape or carpet mesh, along with accenting doorways and stairs with visual contrasts. This could include colored electrical tape or painting the edge of the step of non-carpeted stairways to define it for visual perspective, along with removing clutter or loose cords from pathways within the home. All of these can add a great deal to your overall safety within the home. Stairs can often be a common place for potential falls. Adding things like a second handrail, there are stabilizing supports on both sides can prove helpful. As stated in previous slides, adding reflective non-slip tape or paint to the edge of non-carpeted steps can provide a visual contrast. If the resident is able to afford the replacement of worn or damaged carpeting on steps, it is recommended to do so. Another way to make steps less dangerous is to provide a less graduated incline and provide enough space on each stair for a full-size walker to be placed on each step as you ascend or descend. Low-rise steps provide a longer tread and risers that don't allow for as much as traditional steps. Again, working with an organization that does home modifications or is aging in place certified will be useful to ensure you have them installed correctly. Stair lifts are more costly, but can be quite effective for individuals with limited mobility a straight stair lift is one that travels in a straight line up a flight of stairs, un uninterrupted by landings, bends, or curves, and costs between $3,000 and $5,000 to be installed. While this intervention can be much more cost prohibitive than low-rise steps, there are organizations in some communities that donate used stair lifts or provide them at a discounted rate. Checking with your local area agency on aging to determine if one such company exists in your area would be useful before purchasing this type of intervention. A ramp can be useful for accessing the threshold of doorways to and from a home. Whether it's building a structure to a home you own or renting a folded ramp for a rental property, these can be good alternatives for individuals that have limitations around mobility and navigation. Considerations of recommendations include that to meet ADA compliance, a ramp must be, be one to 12 foot rise of a step to meet the doorway. You should have a 12 foot ramp. Typically, recommendations are to have a ramp that is at least 36 inches wide by ADA standards. Other things to consider is that the landing at the top of the ramp is large enough to fully turn around in a wheelchair or walker idea. Lighting is a big factor in avoiding trip and fall hazards. There are a number of inexpensive yet easy considerations that can help prevent accidents and improve visibility within the home. Placing night lights in areas where there is more night activity or glow-in-the-dark light switches. Place an easy-to-reach lamp next to your bed. Keep a flashlight handy in case of emergencies. Use task lighting for areas that are used for reading and fine motor dexterity.
and using stick-on lights under counter spaces, stairs, and in closets can provide additional lighting for those with potential visual impairments. While Medicare does not presently cover the cost of home modifications, in some states Medicaid will cover the costs for some of these items under the Home and Community-Based Services Waiver. However, given Medicaid is managed at the state level, this often varies state by state. Some communities have developed non-Medicaid-funded government programs to assist with the cost of home modification. Again, checking with your local area agency on aging for specific resources in your community is recommended. There are also national organizations like Rebuilding Together that offer lower cost home modifications through tiered payment structures so that older adults who have less income pay less for minor home modifications. To learn more about potential affiliates in your area of Rebuilding Together, go to their website at www.rebuildingtogether.org. Again, as stated, Medicaid varies state by state. In New York State, Medicaid has gone through a redesign process and has increased the housing-related eligible activities for participants. However, this is not true in all states across the United States. So checking with your statewide Medicaid office to see what types of resources are covered under the home and community-based waiver of the Medicaid program is recommended. While the decision to age in place or move to an LGBT-friendly development or other more congregate setting is a personal one, there are ways to increase the safety of your own home to provide greater stability to you as you age. Again, it is recommended to reach out to your local area agency on aging to identify local organizations specializing in aging in place and home modification. They will have staff skilled at making some of the more advanced modifications. However, things such as lighting, removing throw rugs, removing clutter and loose cords, and installation of grab bars are easier modifications that can significantly reduce the risk of trip and fall. The importance of remaining engaged in your own care as well as co and community-based activities is important to prevent isolation and increase the potential for long-term positive health outcomes. Case management resources often identified through your local LGBT center, local area agency on aging, or through your primary medical provider can assist in connecting you to these resources. LGBT cultural competent providers are the primary component for our LGBT older adults to age in place well. To learn more about some of the non-standardized assessments that you can download to conduct your own home safety assessment, you can look to AARP's home safety checklist or Rebuilding Together's Safe at Home checklist. Both of these are downloadable on our website as well. Thank you so much for joining us today for key considerations in home safety and modifications. We greatly appreciate your time and look forward to hearing from you about work in your community. Thank you.